Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. And now, here's Jeff Crilly. Welcome back to the final segment of the Jeff Crilly Show. What an amazing show. And I'm so excited about uh, the final guest, Candy Evans, a longtime friend, uh, just a respected journalist here in DFW. Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. Thank you so much. I'm going to try to be really good and, and quit Facebooking and tweeting while we're talking. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know anybody who doesn't like you. I mean, you just, I, mean, I can't even picture your face without a big smile on it. Uh, let me tell those, those who don't know, um, Candy Evans uh, broke out on her own, started a blog. And, and when I say blog, uh, some people say, oh, you have a, a nice little blog. No, no, this is not just any blog. <laughs> <It's> huge. <laughs> this, this blog is huge. Um, it has been named by the National Association of Real Estate Editors again and again, uh, the best blog in the country. And I, I just want to know, how did you do it? I don't know. I call myself the accidental publisher because I really had this vague idea. It all started um, when my son got his first job in California and he wanted to go out there. And I said, well, of course, I'm going to take you out and get you settled like I always do. And he goes, oh, no, I'm a big boy. I'm going to go by myself. And he kind of wanted this girl to go with him. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, I'm your mom. I'm going with you. I'm taking you out there. So I kind of found a, a conference to go to so I, you know, would have an excuse. And I got to this conference. It was Inman Real Estate Connect. And this is the year that Twitter was just happening. This is the year that Zillow was just starting out. I literally stood next to the guy who founded Zillow and said to him, what do, what do you do? <laughs> what What is Zillow? That's a terrible name. And, of course, you know. God, you know, now I wish, you know, I hadn't said that. But um, <laughs> I was amazed that I was the real estate reporter at D Magazine. And I was covering real estate and I did not know what these people were talking about because they were all talking about the web and the Internet and how everyone would be buying homes and looking at homes on the Internet after a while. I mean, I didn't even have an, an, a smartphone. I had, you know, a Motorola flip phone. Right. So I kind of came home to Dallas and collected myself and said, you better, you're a reporter, get with this. You better figure out what's going on because this is affecting what you cover. And that's when I had this huge eureka that it was all going online. And wow. so I just said, I'm going to, you know, give so up print. And now, will you that. start? Did you start the blog while still at D Magazine? I started secondshelters.com, which was the second home market, the oh, vacation cool. home market. And um, that's a very small niche, but there are a number of people in certain, I mean, the various. Um, Salaries, you don't have to be a millionaire to have a second home, but a lot of people want an escape home or a second home. And interestingly, it kind of relates back to something you had on the show. People see that as a way of protecting their children right. because they can have a second home community they go to. It's very, very closed and safe and secure, and they can let their children roam. They can let them go on the beach without having to, you know, worry about everything they're doing. So I started that at D, and then D decided they didn't want to have the, um, the, the, Dallas Dirt blog. So I just said, well, I'll just do my own. And I kind of pushed everything to the side and just focused on it. Was that scary for you? Like going out on your own? Because, uh, you know, I worked I worked for Channel 4 and it was, mm -hmm. you know, you're comfortable getting a check every two weeks. Yeah. Was it it's scary? a lot easier. It's a lot easier. It's, a, it's more, it's harder. It's much harder to do your own thing. It wasn't scary, though, because, I mean, our children were grown, and I told my husband, I said, you know, I'm not going to get a paycheck for about a year, and he goes, just don't go to Neiman's. I said, okay, <laughs> you know, so I was like, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate in that respect, and um, I had helped my husband set up his medical practice, so I knew how to do QuickBooks, I knew how to do all that stuff that, you know, that you do, so that wasn't hard. Um, I just, it's just a lot of work. I mean, I didn't get a lot of sleep, and I'm so grateful now that we have 12. I have a wonderful executive editor with wow. Joanna England, and we have now 12 freelancers, and we have people coming to us, wanting to blog for us. Isn't that exciting? It's exciting. You know, I have a blog in Midland. Wow. And we're trying to find someone there. Uh, and one of my son's dear friends just moved there. So that's so good. Maybe there's and we're talking about, you know, maybe doing this elsewhere. So we'll see what happens. You are an entrepreneur. Now, none of this works if you don't have great content. And I think that's one of the that's things it. that you discovered early on. Right. Is if you're getting the information before anybody else, it people will come. You know, if you build right. it, they will come. Right. And and you routinely scoop the Dallas Morning News and the Fort Worth Star Telegram and the largest media outlets in town. It's true. I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not flattering you. It's I mean, I everybody who's anybody in real estate reads CandiesDirt.com. 
Well, I think that, and thank you for that. I really appreciate that. We try very hard. I mean, I keep my ear to the grindstone or the ear to the whatever it is, whatever that saying is. <laughs> ear you to know, the ground. Ear to the ground, you know, <laughs> and my grindstone. nose to the grindstone. It's my way of shortening it. Um, I, um, I try very hard because I have developed a lot of great, you know, contacts and resources. And I think that's something that's missing in media now because of the way they've been kind of abbreviated. They they hire young kids who it's great to give them a chance. They need a chance, but they don't have that that right. seasonedness, we will put it that way, you know, <laughs> where I've been around for a long time. I know these people and yes. I am not going to double cross them either. What would you say, like, I, I know you've had countless scoops. What, what are some of your biggest scoops where you say, I broke this and everybody followed me? Do you remember? Mm. Oh, gosh, there's, I hate to say, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, Almost daily. <laughs> well, I think the biggest scoop I ever had when I was at D is mm -hmm. that I found out where the president was moving, George, George W. Bush. Oh, wow. And um, I, it was just work because no That's... one wanted to talk about that, but I, I, I cross-checked a lot of different things, and when I found out that a, someone in Midland had bought a house on Daria Drive, I was I checked out who he was, and then I realized that he worked, you know, for George Bush, and so that's oh how I put that goodness. together. So that was probably the biggest one because I know I had called the White House, and they didn't call me back. Of course, it's going to call <laughs> me back, you know. And then finally, when I called and said, "Oh, I found out where you guys bought in Dallas," well, they called back. <laughs> it was too late. We'd already posted. But, you know, also, Jeff, I want to tell you, what I'm doing is very new. And it's sort of a, a, a you know, it's it's a learning process. And I say that we're like a boat going down the stream. And, you know, the stream is going. But we don't know where the turns are going to be yet because this is all a new media. And we constantly review um, what are what should we be doing? Should we do this? Should we do that? You know, we're con we hold meetings now. Wow. You know, at my kitchen meetings. table of editorial meetings, and I'm and I have these other journalists, and I said, okay, guys, we all have to really work on this because we want to keep our standards high, and we want to you know be dignified and be Absolutely. good to people. But on the other hand. We are new media, so right. we can get away with things that others can't get away with, I think. So what are some of the um, incarnations of Candy's Dirt since the beginning? Like if we went back to the very first blog, how does it differ from the one that you're writing today? Did you add some features? Well, I think we have um, we have many more voices now. Mm -hmm. I purposely brought in someone who is a lot more liberal than I am, although I think I'm discovering the older I get, the more liberal I get. <laughs> <laughs> but um, John Anderson, who um, came and wrote for me, and is he won two awards this year at wow. NARI, and he's not even a journalist. I mean, it's fabulous. No kidding. But he came to me, and I said immediately, oh, my God, you're just going to need, A, you love high rises, and you live in one, and B, you're liberal. I love that. I need to have someone to balance my, you know, kind of right. North Dallas conservatism or whatever you call it. Um, and then we ha so we have more voices. We have more specialized. We, we now know what, you know, what people want to read and we know what gets hits. Although I will tell you, it never ceases to amaze me when a story gets legs and gets traffic and just gets, you know, thousands and thousands of hits. And I go, oh, my right. God, I never would have thought that. Well, um, you and I have a mutual friend in Dave Mullen from the Katie Trail Weekly. And oh, he, my God. He tells him. me that yes. yours is the most popular item week after week. Yeah. Oh. He, Katie, um, the Katie Trail Weekly is so sweet. I have my little center spot there. And um, he'll call. He'll, he'll email me at like three in the morning. Go, Where's my dirt? You know, like, oh my God, I forgot to give it to you this week. Um, I love that. And I love that that is, you know, a print thing because hyperlocal print does very well. Again, it's content. People don't want to read about stuff that they can get anywhere. Right. They want the nitty gritty. And I kind of know what I want. I just give it to people. That's all. So do you go to a lot of cocktail parties oh with God. realtors or how do you, how do you get your scoops? Well, Oh, that's kind of my trade secret, but I yeah. think it really <laughs> has to do with relationships. It really does. Um, but I do go to a lot of parties. Oh my God, I do. You find well, your sources that you've known for years whisper it to you uh, before ever giving it to somebody at the Dallas Morning News or or uh, Fort Worth Star Telegram. Well, or yeah, Channel because 4, the Dallas Morning News doesn't 
they don't really write about real estate though. I mean, and poor Steve Brown, he does a very good job, but you know, he's got to cover commercial, which is huge. Yes. Huge in this and he's got to cover commercial, he's got to cover residential. And yeah, Steve still gets a few scoops once in a while. I tease I tease Candace Carlisle, the Dallas business journal. I said, Well, they hired you because your name is Candace to compete with me, you know. <laughs> It's got to be Candace. <laughs> she's a very, very, she very is a good, good. She's, she's a yeah. good journalist. She yeah. really, and she covers commercial, residential, and sports. I mean, that's a lot to do, you know. So I just think that um, I think it's a relationship, and I think it's because I will, um, I'll be around. You know, yes. I'll be there, and I'm, I'm not gonna. As I said, I'm gonna treat my people well, and I will not tell you who told me. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the candy empire. How, uh, if if you're branching out from from Dallas and possibly Midland, I mean, do you see Houston? Do you see Austin? Do you see New Poss- York and L.A.? Well, I would never compete with Curb there in New York and L.A. I think this would work in smaller cities like Nashville, mm-hmm. or I'm talking to a friend in Sarasota, Florida now. Um, I think that this would work in smaller communities where there's high end homes and there's people interested in real estate. And you know, I always say that real estate in this town is a commodity like oil because we love our dirt. Yes, you and do. We love to follow it. We love to know what people are doing with their dirt. So. Well, I love to see you on TV because I, I it seems like Channel Eight or Channel Eleven or Channel Four will interview you on a story yeah. um, when you're you're you know they want to know the dirt right. on something. Well, again, it's just because I focus on real estate that, you know, it's it's hard for a reporter who does everything to, to be able to get, you know, instant education on, on the real estate. So it's easier to come to me and just say, you know, what what is the story? By the way, I'm going to be fully disclosure here. I do have a real estate license. I do not sell real estate, though. But I got my real estate license because I thought, you know, I've got to sleep with the enemy. I've got to know what they're doing. Right. Well, and it, it probably gives the your sources a, a greater appreciation for you that right. you really know your subject. Right. And I mean, taking the courses and understanding how they how they work. And, you know, realtors are really, really misunderstood. They work their butts off for really very little pay. Do not think that, you know, just because you have your real estate license, you're going to make a bazillion dollars because the average realtor earns about 40000 a year. Is that right? That's right. Candy, we are out of time. I'm oh, going to have to bring darn. you back. So, so your website's <laughs> candiesdirt.com and secondshelters.com. Thank you, yes. Thank you so much for being on the Jeff Curley Show, and we'll see you next week. Okay.